Hey guys, how's it going? Derek Craig here with oilfoodbasics.com. Dropping a quick video to talk more about shut-ins. Um, obviously, this is a hot topic and a lot of different strategies around shutting in and cutting spending. Also, you know, just producing what's economical, but yet at the same time, not damaging assets. So there's all kinds of different strategies uh, being employed right now. And I've got John Farrell from uh, well database CEO and co-founder um, you know they're, they're a company that's you know all about looking at data uh, public data and trying to make sense of it and everything so I'm glad to have you as part of the conversation to dive into um, th these numbers and what we've seen work and just your ideas in, in general about these topics so great to have thanks you. for having me Derek I appreciate it man awesome well you know like we talked about kind of before we even started recording um, you know about you know operators having different strategies and we we're talking about you know it's not being announced we know kind of what volumes and stuff operators might be um, cutting, but we don't really know what strategy, um, right? And we've kind of basically pointed out three main strategies we wanted to discuss in, in this little short video. And to give everybody who's watching, you know, get your thoughts on, you know, what your company's doing, what you've seen work, um, and what, where your concerns are with the different methods. Um, but, you know, one of the, the first methods um, being just, you know, flat out uh, shutting in the well, right, for an extended period of time. Um, what have you guys seen on the, the well database side? Yeah, so, you know, shut-ins historically have, you know, when when times were good, so to speak, have been because there was a problem with the well. You know, either mm -hmm. it was it was just a dog or um, maybe it needed a work over. Uh, you, you have some, you have to be careful when you're not analyzing that data because uh, many times pumps are going in, the well is is changing, so you can't compare what the production was to what the production was after. Uh, there are a limited number of cases um, in the maybe in the DJ basin where we had some capacity constraints at some points in time, uh, where you do see some some medium term shut ins um, that were due to because they, they couldn't get the pipeline capacity. Um, and so it's, those are interesting to see. Uh, they're pretty limited data set. But um, in those specific areas, uh, what we see is production tends to come back pretty clean. It comes back um, typically with a spike of some kind uh, makes up for the 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 shut in period. Uh, and then comes to a similar but different decline afterwards. So at the end of the day, we're, you know, in those situations that we've seen the data supports that uh, you, you tend to break even on, on, and in, in many of the cases. Now, of course, that'll vary based off of number of factors, including uh, where you're at in the well life, you know, the, mm -hmm. the base and everything you're working with. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's it's not a black and white, but still. By and large, uh, the data comes back clean. That the, the shut-ins have a, a, a nominal effect on the long-term life of a, a production, um, for at least for medium-term shut-ins. Gotcha. Well, and, and that you raise a good point too. A lot of times, things are changing right during the shut-in, or you know, you're shutting in for frac, kind of charging up the reservoir. It might help the well, might hurt it. <laughs> you might get fracked. That's it. Right. Um, so it's kind of a, a toss up there, or like you said, changing artificial lift types. And I know that's been one of the, the larger concerns with operators shutting in wells for let's say anything over than like two weeks, right? Or anything like a month or longer, like um, that they're going to have a hard time getting um, those artificial lift systems to start up without some type of a failure or, you know, just damaging the productivity. Um, just yeah, from absolutely. So. Yeah, between corrosion and, and, and the pump systems and whether you're pulling them or not, the, the cost to shut in a well could could be nominal if you just want to flip the switch. It also could be fairly expensive to, to mm -hmm. pull the pump and, and completely. <laughs> yeah, and so it's um it's variable and every operator's got to make their own call. Um, I would love to see more data uh, around what operators are doing currently. It's actually really interesting um, because it's just one of a number of strategies and one that I honestly think will, will be employed more more common than the other strategies because it is just easy. Draw a line in the mm -hmm. sand, shut in the wells that don't meet this criteria and then move on. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, while I'd like to think that we're pretty creative in the industry, uh, we don't have a great history supporting that. So, mm -hmm. um, the, other, so yeah. the other issue on that too, you know, um, you know, is kind of changing the economics on that well, like suddenly um, it can look like not as good of a well, right? If you damage artificial lift or something, or it's gonna require a work over, right? You can suddenly change the economics of those wells and they might not mm -hmm. ever really deem them viable to, to bring back online. So that kind of leads into strategy number two, uh, which has kind of been discussed on LinkedIn um, but I'm not too sure, and John, you know, you said you wasn't uh, too sure if operators are actually even doing this, but it's the idea right. of cycling between, you know, which wells you're shutting in. So you're shutting in roughly the same volume over your period of time, but you're shutting in for two weeks at a time, like different groups, right? What's your thoughts on that? 
So yeah, this is um, was an interesting thing because when we first started talking about shut-ins, I was one that was kind of like, you know, there's too many variables. We can't shut in that much. It's gonna it's gonna lead to a lot of unexpected consequences, mm -hmm. and that's you know, it's the one thing we don't like in the industry if we can avoid is uh, uncertainty. Um, but then it was brought up that hey, you know, we shut in these things for two, three weeks at a time while we're uh, completing offsetting wells. What if we just cycle through? kind of created your dynamics as to how much you wanted to shut in and then cycle through in two week periods around all the wells and in, in, in your basin or lease that you needed to do. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it hit me. I was like, that, that would actually work. <laughs> that, that should work really well. I mean, we have an enormous amount of data about that. And as you've said earlier, there's, there's definitely other variables uh, as far as what's happening. Are we seeing mm -hmm. frack hits, recharging, those kind of things. But um, what we do see in the broad, broad data is that that's a pretty clean process. We see that the wells uh, are producing and they come back to a very similar uh, production and even sometimes can improve the long-term life of a well by flattening um, the decline of the production a little bit. So if you're, depending on the scale of uh, uh, the life you're looking for out of a well, you can actually get some bumps. And there's always going to be some variability there, but it's mm -hmm. actually a very interesting and the data supports it to be a very solid idea. But like you said, uh, I haven't heard from a specific operator saying that this is what they're actually doing. Um, that's mm -hmm. been pretty quiet. Uh, and while I'd love to hear it, I understand why they're keeping it a little quiet. Right. We're in a, a unique environment here. And so, um, yeah, this is not going to be something they're going to throw around uh, with a reckless abandon. Yeah, no, definitely. And that, but it's definitely a very unique idea. And it might kind of be the best of both worlds potentially and also kind of tell you some interesting uh, insight if you really utilize the, the times that you're shutting in. Uh, you can get some additional kind of cool scientific <laughs> reservoir data uh, from Absolutely. that also, which will, I hopefully, you know, give everybody a greater insight into future projects and development and spacing, right. you know, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, you can do all kinds of cool tests, right? If you're kind of rotating um, and, yeah. and really controlling and being smart about uh, which wells you're shutting in and when. But with that said, kind of the third strategy, um, so we got shutting, we got the cycling, and then we've kind of got the idea of just choking back, right? If you're, so if you're still trying to hit uh, a particular volume that you're trying to take offline, um, I know, John, you're kind of a proponent of operators shutting back or choking back wells. Right. No, I, and then my thing is that I, I've seen it be very successful uh, in some operations, particularly in the, um, in the Southern Delaware Basin. Um, I also seen it be very unsuccessful, too. So it's not like a, a silver bullet. But at the same time, mm -hmm. um, in my opinion today, we're, we're looking to lower production today. Um, but then everybody is fairly optimistic on the idea maybe six months from now uh, production will be good so I mean, the commodity prices will improve and then you know maybe we see a, a i don't know it's big it's a crystal ball i don't have but yeah <laughs> maybe we see a, a jump in demand once all the travel kind of picks back up but regardless the goal is to reduce production today um all the while maintaining the opportunity to call a reserve that you have by you know mm -hmm. producing more six months from now and in a lot of the data we've seen that the successful operators who choke back wells can drill a new well complete a well produce significantly less than offsetting operators who have al alternate strategies um, but by the six month period they've evened out in production on a monthly basis and by 36 months the cumes have actually exceeded um, non choke back well. So if you're looking for a long term strategy, um, that's one that gives you lower production today, higher production tomorrow, uh, and then maybe the ability to, to have some very nice looking reserves um, that, mm -hmm. that is clean and easy to do. Um, and it allows us to kind of keep the service industry rolling forward a little bit too. Awesome. Well, and I think it comes down to, you know, op what the operators seen historically work in their fields and every reservoir and uh, production for everything's going to be set up a little bit different. Um, and also, you know, they might not be saving as much costs um, if they're just kind of lowering the production on every well across the field as opposed to rotating. So there's lots of considerations that goes into this, but uh, definitely a very unique, uh, definitely a, a good idea uh, mm -hmm. to consider as uh, maybe a good uh, option to employ in your field. And I know you guys um, you know, have a lot of in data and have written some pretty crazy algorithms to identify shut in wells and have a lot of data on this. You've got multiple blog posts about. Uh, shut-ins and kind of an analyzing uh, wells in certain different situations and everything all that's on well databases uh, website you guys can mm -hmm. also get a free account and start doing some analysis on your own uh, and see what you come up with too so john thanks so much for for being on i love your insight and look forward to doing more of these with you hey thanks for having me derek i appreciate it awesome thanks john and guys you know we'd love to hear from you you know what you, what you guys have seen work what your thoughts are on these methods uh, what we miss? I'd uh, love to hear that down in the comments below. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.